gentlemen, my name is Endo Dunahoo, and I'm from a company called Catering Innovation Agency. What I'm going to discuss today is the power of induction cooking. Now, most of the people that in this country and probably in the UK as well are used to dealing with gas. Gas as a commodity is fine and everything else, but to people see then the power of what an induction cooking can do. And the company that I work for is a company called Catering Innovation Agency. We've been in, we uh, established in 2008, and basically what we do is mostly um, equipment that is energy efficient. We don't deal in gas, we don't deal in electric. It's 90% of our business is induction, and induction pieces and company ovens that are uh, use 50% less energy and everything else. So our mantra was just to uh, bring down your energy bills, basically. Now, I'll go on to the next one. I'll just go through the, the advantages and benefits of induction cooking are it's cheaper, it's faster, it's cooler, it's safer, and it's cleaner. Now, most chefs today aren't used to dealing with or cooking with induction, and most of them will only say gas. Okay? So what I'm going to I'm going to blow all those bits out of the, the water and I'm going to show you why it's cheaper, why it's faster, cooler, safer and cleaner on each different slide. So, it's cheaper. Why is it cheaper? Well, induction is 94% efficient. Gas is 50% there, thereabouts. And electric hobs are 65%. So basically what I mean by there is that the energy from induction, which is a magnetic field going up through your... your specialist pot, which is an actual induction pot, is going to heat the product and not the room or the, the, the pot itself. So basically, 94% of the energy the juice you use is going into cooking the product and nothing else. With gas, 50% of the energy is used to heat the product and the other 50% is going up into your canopy or into the room that's around you. And the same with electric hobs. What I will do is I'll give you examples of where the actual savings will be because most people say, well I can buy my gas for 4 cents a kilowatt hour and electricity is costing me in around 12 cents a kilowatt hour, but I'll, I'll throw that bit out as well. It's ready to use, no heating up signs, thanks to the electronic pot, pot recognition and it's ideal at, at hectic times. So, the cost of your kilowatt electricity is 12 cents and gas is in around 4 cents. Now that's natural gas. I'm using here, I'm not using the bottled LPG gas or I'm not using uh, any of the other butane gases or anything else. So that, those figures there equates to efficiency terms of 12.87 a kilowatt for your electricity and 8 cent for natural gas. Because obviously your kilowatt only, you're only using, uh, if you're using 1 kilowatt of gas, well, 4 cent of it, it costs you double because 50% 50, 50 of it isn't doing anything. So for every one euro spent on energy, 94 cent is used for cooking, whereas gas 50 cent goes up into the canopy or heating the room or anything else like that. In heating terms, and I've just taken it as a one kilowatt burner, both in induction and a one kilowatt burner in gas, the heating terms of 0.75 litres of water on induction is four minutes, and gas is eight minutes on a one kilowatt burner. Okay. Now if you take those figures, they're very, very important figures. That means that induction is twice as fast as gas. So when you put your pot on, it immediately, if it was a 5 kilowatt burner, which is most chefs would be used to, is a 5 kilowatt burner uh, gas burner, and then also be 5 kilowatt induction burner. So those times will obviously dramatically decrease. In, in our, in our, uh, 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 when we were testing these, in a 5 kilowatt burner, gas is about 3 minutes for a litre of water and induction is about 45 seconds. So now you need to know your time speeds. So with that in, you could say that because you're only going to be using a half a kilowatt for the same period of time, you divide it by 2 again. So now your energy costs are a lot cheaper. But it's also, and this is one of the biggest bugbears for people who pay the energy bill, not the chefs or anybody working in the kitchen is when you take your pot off your gas ring or your induction ring 
the gas is in, in, in inevitably left on. And you go in into the kitchen, you're looking at six burners, the gas is on in the six burners, and there isn't a pause left there. And that's huge energy costs. Also, the ability to cook food faster means greater profits. We all know that. And that's the game you're in, is to make profits. It's for nothing other, no other reason but that. Um, and also, another uh, part of the thing is, is maintenance. With gas, gas is a dirty product, gas is a carbon product. You've got thermocouples, you've got um, burners that get clogged with dirt. You've got all of those things that require engineers to come out, cost you money and every week or whatever it is, if, if, the, if the chefs aren't looking after the, the, the units or if you don't have a maintenance contracted position. So they all cost money. With induction, it's just a wipe. There is no heat transfer, you're not heating up the kitchen or anything else like that. Cooler. Induction cooking is cooler to cook with, therefore in a better environment to work with. As I said before, you're not cooking, you're not heating the environment with induction, you're just heating the product in the pot. And that's a huge difference between induction cooking and gas cooking. When you're cooking with gas cooking, the environment around you has been heated up. As I said, 50% of the gas has been used to heat. You, the air, goes up into your canopy and everything else, and that needs to be cooled down. That whole environment needs to be cooled down. So you've, you're going to have air conditioning, you're going to have everything else, you're going to have a high extraction rate on your canopy to take all these this heat out. Okay? Cooler environments means more efficiency with regard to staff, and therefore money savings in relation to cooling, which I'll just dis uh, mentioned there. Okay. Safer, as there's no radiant heat source, no red hot coils from electric burners or open flames that can, can ignite flammable materials or fumes. So obviously it is safer. It's, it's actually, when you take the pot off, you can put your hand on it. There is no, nothing to burn you. So it's really safe for staff and everybody else. Okay. It stays cool to the touch, no, no chance of burning yourself. And there's no carbon monoxide gases or anything else that could cause um, anybody to have any accidents or anything else. Another one of the reasons that induction cooking is good, you don't need an answer suppression system over, the, over your induction hob. Whereas you do with gas, and that's another cost. So with induction cooking, the advantages are there for everything that was um, explained before as well in relation to, uh, to your cooking side. It's cleaner. It's cleaner in a few different ways, and I've just said these two here. The easiest to apply is clean, and only needs a wipe of a cloth. There's nothing else, there's no scouring, there's no, everything comes off the glass. There is no need for scrapers or anything else, it's just white. And that means savings on wages and cleaning products. It's also cleaner for the environment, you know, in the environment that you work in. We all know the kitchens are very, very hot places to work in, so you're trying to make that environment as comfortable as possible for, for your staff, really. And it should be the way it should be. You know, staff shouldn't be expected to work in environments where the heat inside in the kitchen is 30, 30 to 35 or even higher. Like, nobody in this day and age should have to go through with that. With induction cooking, and we have these kitchens all over Ireland, the chefs wear short sleeves, or, or long sleeves, sorry, because they're cold during the winter, and they're given out that, you know, there isn't enough heat. And that's a huge difference for a chef to say, I'm actually cold in a kitchen, because there's absolutely no heat of these, giving off these. You might have a little bit of heat, with even with the, the griddles here, you can get induction griddles. So with the induction griddle, it'll only come on when the actual meat is thrown on or whatever, is thrown on that section of the griddle. So you don't have a big, huge heat source coming from a griddle. Okay, so induction has come quite a long way in 20 years. And in Europe, as I said, induction will be one of the favored areas of cooking now. Most Michelin star restaurants cook with induction. Gas is actually coming way down in the pecking order because of the speed, because of the instant uh, results you get. So if you're cooking sauces or anything, that for a la carte, you just put the sauce on and in five, ten seconds your, your sauce is ready to throw on your, 
you know, pre-prepared prepared sauces, obviously. Um, prepared, just put on your side dish or whatever else. Um, the places that we have put the induction into, we, we go back quite often and ask the chefs how they find it. And with the newer chefs that come in, they said, look, I've never used induction, and they'd be frightened of it. But when they start to work with it, they said they'd never go back to gas. And in those places that we have that, the chefs are still there. And in one instance, 15 years later, the head chef is still in the same position as he was, because he, the amount of induction in Ireland isn't great enough to be able to move around. And they don't want to go back to the old ways of cooking with gas. Um, I don't have any more slides on it, just that that, that was my... Uh, this, this section here, I think, is probably the most, if any you have any questions on it, yeah. Sorry? The capital costs are quite high. Yeah, the capital costs would be quite high. The payback would be approximately four to five years because there is no maintenance issues on it. As long as you look after the, as long as you look after the, your investment, as in getting it, uh, maintenance to every year and it really is only cleaning out the generators the generators are underneath that create the magnetism there is one other disadvantage there's a few disadvantages obviously nothing is perfect the other disadvantage is anybody with a pacemaker you can't use induction so that's another one sorry three phase electricity yes it is yeah because they be but they're never in constant use. You're never. Yes, correct. Once you lift the pot off, you're not using anything. The electricity is cut off. It's only on a standby mode. It's only on a flicker light. If I show to you here, uh, there's a better photograph here. And these here. So this goes one to eight. Okay, in ours, this is one of our units. Um, and one to eight, you will never have it up at eight. That's using five full kilowatts. The other unit here, and I didn't actually say, but a massive advantage is as well, is the amount of pots you can get on one unit here. Yes, they are. They're induction pots. They have a magnet underneath. Exactly, correct. But if you were to view the four burner gas, you can only get four pots on the burners. With this here, these are 300 by 300 millimeters. You can get a pot there, 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 and there. If the, the pots are small, using still only the same amount of electricity. So that's a massive advantage, especially for a la carte, where people are using small pots to heat a little bit of sauce for one dish and a, a, another bit of sauce for another dish. So if you could get four pots on there, and the pot only needs to be on 30% of the induction plate for it to work at full tilt. But you will never have it at number eight. It's always number two to three. It's because number eight, you just burn everything. You know? I think it burns. No, you can get an oven incorporated, but it'll only be an ordinary electric oven. Okay, it wouldn't be a uh, an induction oven or anything else like that. But we do combi ovens. We do combi ovens, a 14 grid combi oven by the same manufacturer, which is a German manufacturer, and it only uses 11 kilowatts compared to everybody else that uses 20 for the same combi oven. But it'll take 14 trays, which is actually four trays more than most combi ovens. You know. Um, Look at well, what is expensive. You see, look, I, I never, I never talk expense because, in fairness, the amount of the amount of the units we put them into, and we put one into a place four and a half years ago, and I looked at before I came here, and I'm not going to mention it, but if, if you're interested in mine, you could go visit it. I asked, I asked, her, I had to have a look at their account to see if they were still, because we've never had a call, never had a call on any of the equipment that we put in there. So we don't make money on the service. It's just, we only make it out once a year when we ask them to go in and say, look, let's have a look and let's, let's see what you're doing right and doing wrong. Because in fairness, it's an expensive investment. It needs to be looked after. But they are, there is one of these kitchens up in Beulings Hotel in Leopardstown and it's there for 15 years. And if you walk in there, you'd still think it's brand new. That's how easy it is to clean it, you know? It is, obviously it is a high investment, you know, but there is a payback. Yeah. 
I make it happy. The burners, the burners won't go. The, it doesn't go. Yes. And you replace one, and you replace one. No, the generator. There's a generator underneath that you replace. Yes, just the generator. The generator it once creates the magnetism. That's all you replace. There's coils in this air that create the magnetism. But yes, you, you, you replace the generator. But I have never replaced the generator. Yes. No, there'll be a few generators. Well, it depends on what you want. You can you can order it whichever way you like. You can order it with a two ring has one generator. So these these a four ring has two obviously. So if one generator went down, you'd be down two rings. That's that's the idea. But I, to this day, I've never replaced a generator. I've replaced the switches, all right, because the chefs have broke the switches. But that's about it. Slow cooking, you just put it at number one and it simmers. Boil is at about four. You'd never put it up to eight though, it's just too. See, the concentration of the energy is through the pot. So when you have a five kilowatt burner, whereas gas, five kilowatt, 50 percent, as I said, is going around the pot and heating up your air. Whereas if you have a five kilowatt burner on this guy, it's going right through the product. So, like, if something, I, I, I'm not a chef, but to boil water is one of the biggest things that they do for potatoes or whatever and if you can boil your water in half the time it takes to boil water with gas but then you've speed, especially for things like pastas and all of that that's what you want. Obviously, in fairness, the place that I put it into it's taken those chefs about two weeks to get used to it because of the, the speed and they have a habit of burning a few things at the very start and that look, but once they get used to it then it's it's it's, it's the way to go. And I do believe in about 20 years time that induction will be a lot more relevant in this country than it is now. You know, like chefs weren't happy to take it on because they were so used to, you know, gas. And look, gas, there's nothing wrong with gas. Gas is a good, it's a good medium, but I think the gas days, we need to move on as well. Like when combi ovens came out first, nobody touched them. And the chefs would say, no, I'm not putting in potatoes into that. There isn't a kitchen in the country without a family oven now. You know, so... Yes, sorry, sir. Is it Is Yes. What about it? There's sensors in the steel. Yes, exactly, correct. There's all sensors in the steel. And once it waits, exactly, correct. But only that section, there's about few thousand sensors in the steel and then it'll just do that section. Oh look, it'll be very, very expensive. But look at it, if it's energy, look at your biggest expense after wages is energy. If you could say to get a robot instead of a chef to do exactly what you'd buy the robot. No matter what, you know, so but we're not at that day yet. <laughs> Is there any other questions? Yeah? The downside. Well, if you have a pacemaker, you can't use it. Um, I, I don't have a downside, to tell you the truth, because I think all, the, all of the, the advantages to it are so great that it beats every other medium of cooking with. Let's put it that way. But three phase electricity, out the country, it's fairly hard to get three phase electricity. Only if you have a pacemaker. Yeah, you're not allowed to use it if you have, because it's magnetic, obviously. But, but other besides that, no. No. It's, it's the magnetic field is and really you could have a pacemaker, it wouldn't do anything to it. It's just that they have to put put it there. There's a sticker on the the unit. I don't know if it's on, it's not on that one, but they have to cover them themselves. It won't affect it, but they say look, just be careful around it. The magnetic is going through the pot. Is it contained? It's contained in the pot, yeah, it's contained in the product. You're not heating the, you're not heating the pot either, you're heating the product in the pot. You know, I, if you ask anybody in the, the domestic market who's used both the 
same as gas and induction. Somebody that has an induction hob, they'll tell you it's the best thing since sliced bread. It's just the way it is. It's just that we're fairly slow to take it on in the commercial sense here in Ireland because of gas. And gas is the 90%, you know. About 50, no, about 50% to 60% more expensive. That's the price. So if you're paying 100, you'd be paying about 100. 40, 150. But the, the, yes. Well, no, that's it. Look, you save on everything else after that. You save on maintenance. You know, as I said, that, that place in Dublin that we put a whole induction kitchen into, we've had, I, and it was on refrigeration, we've had two service calls. And that was on refrigeration. In four and a half years, nothing on the equipment. Nothing, zero. You know, but now in fairness, the stuff we, you can buy cheap induction as well, and you'll be replacing that. It depends on where the generator is made. The generator is the key. So if, it's, if the generator is made in Europe, you're more than likely getting a good one. If it's made somewhere else, in a whole bunch of countries, but you're not going to be getting it. So if you're buying a buffer, uh, I'm not going to mention the names, but if, you know what I'm talking about. If you buy something for 2,000 euros, don't expect it to last 10 years. You know, I'm talking about four ring here at about 14,000 euros. That's the type of... Because the, the generator is what creates the magnetism, nothing else. You know, but the savings are massive. You don't have to cool your kitchen, or you know, because of the heat, so you can turn off your your air conditioning and all of that. Chefs are happier. Happy chef, is happy food. Sorry. Well, you won't. You, you can tell them that you don't need an anti suppression system. So, you know, if they've told you that you do need one already, they probably would do. Yes. You can. You can say to them, I, I've never asked them because insurance companies don't tell you anything. On you. As we all know, they'll probably try and keep you on the same rate and say it won't go up. <laughs> Is that it? Thank you. Thank you very much.